to show you how to use um, my InDesign templates to format a book for print in, in InDesign. Um, I haven't used InDesign for a while because um, for the last year or so I've just been paying someone else to do my formatting for me. I learned how to use it, um, but it became one of those things where it's more convenient to outsource than to actually do everything myself. Um, and recently for my fiction, I've just been formatting in Word, even though it doesn't look quite as nice. It's good enough um, and it's easier to make changes and things, um, which is why I've just stuck with Word. But I'm going to see if I can. I made a, a guide on the website that looks kind of like this probably a couple of years ago now, um, but I didn't make any videos. So I'm going to go through this guide a little bit and try to record what it actually looks like um, live. And hopefully things will go smoothly enough that you can learn how to format a book in InDesign. So first, um, I've opened up one of these templates. These templates, I think, are just in the master package on the website, but I'm going to make some more that will be available free soon so that you can just get some free book formatting templates um, from the website. And these already have some styles. Um, these actually aren't ideal. They have these gray bars up on top. Um, I'd probably want to go with something simpler. So let me look for one of the other templates. Here's this final package. I have a whole bunch of templates. Um, I'll just click on another one. The thing about formatting is that really they're all going to be just about the same. The only difference is really going to be the, the fonts that you use for the chapter titles, which should match your cover design anyway. Um, so like this font, you would never want to take a format and just use the format as it is because your format should match the cover and the cover really needs to match the genre. So you want to just take a template if it saves some time, change the fonts to match your book cover, which hopefully is well designed, and then leave the rest alone. Um, and for the rest of it, you're just going to use a simple serif font on the on DIYbookformats.com. I have a whole list of both free and paid professional fonts you can use for the body. And then there's some small choices like you could use a drop cap if you want to. You could um, have all caps on the first few words, which is pretty common. And the first paragraph is usually not indented, whereas all the other paragraphs are indented. Other than that, the chapter titles, like chapter one, there's not going to be a header or a footer, where all the other pages there will be. Um, in Microsoft Word, let me show you quickly the contrast. Actually, I don't have anything else to open. Um, in Microsoft Word, you could just click on here and edit this header and footer, and these would just be repeating. It's a little different um, in InDesign to change those, you have pages. So here in this format, you can look over here. I have my H master, my I master. InDesign uses uh, master pages. So my H master looks like this. It's just a blank page. And my I master has the page numbers and the footers. So different templates. Sometimes the page number will be at the bottom. Sometimes the, the author name of the book title will be on top um, in different fonts, but you can you change the styles and change all this stuff on the master pages, not actually in the book itself. And these will just automatically show up. The page numbers will be they'll automatically set. Um, these templates should be set up right, so you're not you don't actually have to set most of this up. You just have to change it with your own text. But if you want to change it, um, or like for example, even when you open it up and you start out, you're going to have to change this. Um, I'll just quickly change it with my author, my author name and the book I'm going to play with. So that's kind of done. And then if I go back to the actual book, I can see that my book's name and my name is there. It's going to be repeating um, throughout the book. So the other thing that I'm going to have to do is paste my chapters. There's a couple ways to do it. I'll try this out and see if it works. Um, I'm just going to take the first chapter, 
copy the whole thing from my Word document. If you don't have Word, you might be using Scrivener or something else, that's fine. Um, you're gonna have to copy and paste it into InDesign if you want to use InDesign. You can import a file, um, a Word file, I think, or a text file, but then you'd have to set up everything again. So it'll be easier to just start with one of my templates um, and copy and paste your text. So there's a couple ways to do it. I'm gonna try to just take one chapter first. Actually, you're probably gonna wanna paste your entire book, but then you'd have to go through and split everything up again. Um, so we'll see how this works. If I highlight everything, the danger is if I just, it'll probably take the style from where I start. So like if I just did this and copy pasted it there, it'll look kind of funny because it's taking that drop cap style and the, the big text style and it's doing that for every paragraph. So I don't want to do that. Um, the way to avoid it is just to get rid of this first part, this first or that part I might want to just do separately. Oops. So if I paste it down in the regular text, which is what I just did, um, it'll take the regular text style. And the way you find these styles is you have character styles and paragraph styles. So here, this is just the normal paragraph style. And it's different from up here is the first paragraph. And then this is probably even another one. Um, so what I would do is if this was the first paragraph, I can highlight it and click on first paragraph. And then that's going to set up just right. It looks kind of funny because I'm using that um, quotes mark at the beginning because it starts with a quote. Um, so that drop cap looks funny. But otherwise, that's all I would do. I would delete this first paragraph. Um, I would copy and paste my whole text in just as the normal style. And then that other first paragraph, I would change the style to the first paragraph too. And this stuff I can change. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. You can click right here on the styles. And that'll pop up and show you all the details of that style that you can change and then save. But the way that's probably a little bit easier, if you really want to change something, for example, if I want to make this text bigger, if I want to increase the line spacing, um, then I'd right click It's actually been a long time since I've done this. Um, let's see, it's up here, I think. Redefine style. So I change the style, then I go back here to my paragraph styles. It's still highlighted on this style, which is the one it's set for, but then I'll go up here and I'll go to redefine style, and that changes this style. So in every first paragraph, it's gonna look like that all the way through the book. And you do the same thing if you wanted the normal style to match. I'd make this a little bigger. I'd increase the line height. Now this is the normal plus, but I'd go up here to redefine style. And then it would change the style for the whole book. Um, that's something you can change and play with. The, the only danger is, like I said before, you've got things set up with your master pages. And your master pages don't move automatically like they should. So now what happens is this used to be the first chapter or the first page um, of a new chapter, which is why there's no header or footer. And so I have to go through here in my pages tab. And this one shouldn't be an H anymore. I'll apply master to pages and I'll change that to an I. And then I'll have to go down and look for this one too. And this might actually happen a lot, depending on how much you're changing and fixing things. Um, so, but uh, you'd want to do that at the end because once you, if you're changing your styles and things, or if you change the font or the size or anything, 
um, and your pages move around a lot, you're going to have to go through and reapply the master pages to every chapter page. So you don't want to do that until the very end of your formatting. When everything else looks good and done, then you can go and um, make sure your master pages are set up the way that they should be. Um, the other thing that you're going to need to do, though, because this was just a template, it actually wasn't very long. So this first, I, I pasted in Um, I pasted it in chapter one. I think I just started from here though. So this chapter one looks kind of funny. But what's gonna happen when you paste a whole chapter is you're probably gonna run out of room. So what happens is I pasted the whole chapter, it goes down here and then I'm out of pages. So what I want to do is create new pages and then reflow the rest of my text to fill in the pages. Um, and that's a little tricky. Let me see if I remember how to do it. I'll click on this little tiny plus button here. And then it shows me in my cursor the rest of the text that still needs to be pasted that it didn't have room for. Um, let me check my guide to make sure that I remember how to reflow the text. Master pages, we talked about a little bit. This is overset text. So what I want to do is click the red plus sign, and then go down to the next new pages. And you want to hold down shift. Maybe that's the only thing. Let's try it. So if I hold shift, it changes. You can see by my cursor here, it gives that little curving arrow. That means it's going to reflow the rest of the text in the document. Um, I think it's not going to work if I just click here. But I'll try it. Seems like it did work, actually. So this is the one, the chapter that I just put in. At first it had run out of room, but then I held I hit the little plus, the little red plus, and I held down shift and I clicked the mouse. That's all I had to do to reflow the rest of the chapter's text. So it reflowed all the rest of that chapter, which had been cut off. And then this was some other text that was already here in the template before which I didn't paste in. I can just delete that. And then chapter three starts here. So like I said, I'd have to go through it later once I pasted all my, all my text. And I could do this chapter by chapter. Um, here's chapter three, so I could just go back to my Word document and grab another chapter. This one should be faster now that I'm a little more aware of what I'm doing. So I've copied that text. I don't want to paste it in the first paragraph because that would give me the first paragraph style. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is just I'll highlight this paragraph and I'll replace it with all the text from my chapter. So most of that got pasted in and it looks good. Now I'd go back and I'd delete this first paragraph. I'd select the first paragraph 
that I just copied and pasted in. And I'd hit the style I set up for the first paragraph. And that is done, it worked really well. So it took the drop cap, it took the first, the style that I set, um, and all the rest of it's just there in my normal paragraph style. If I go down to the end of the chapter, it looks like it didn't um, give me that red plus sign this time, so it just kind of all fit in there, which is nice. And then this is the other stuff that's left over from the template that I can just delete. Whoops. And that didn't quite work because I think I deleted too much. Let's try again. Okay, so that worked fine. So I could do this chapter by chapter. It wouldn't take me too long. Um, the other way I could do it is to try just taking the whole book, select all, and pasting it into here. We'll try that this time for chapter four. So I'm going to skip this first paragraph for now. We'll go to the next paragraph, copy paste, and I just pasted in the whole thing. I think if I go down to the end of this document, I'm going to get this plus sign again um, because I only have 54 pages in this document and actually there's probably a couple hundred pages in my book. So I'm going to click on this red plus that's down at the end of my document. It looks like that. I'm going to hold down the shift key to see that weird arrow. And while I'm holding the shift key, I'm going to click the mouse again and then it's going to automatically add pages. It looks like it messed up a little bit down here. Let me stop this video and try to figure it out.